Okay, so the plan for today's video is to take a look at some of the favorite moments from my favorite movies, and with the help of Artlist's new LUTs, try to recreate them. We're gonna be working on three different emulations, Dune, Blade Runner 2049, and Harry Potter. I'll be taking you through the process of how I find my favorite looks from my favorite movies, and also going through Artlist and showing you how I can find shots that match the look that you're going for. And then I'll be taking you on a little mission to the forest just up there to recreate a shot with a really intense grade with some really difficult conditions where the starting point is super far away from the reference shot. Okay, so we're in the office. The plan is to recreate the looks from June. So the first mission is to find some footage that matches that. This is the one. Download, done. Next, we're gonna download a few high quality shots from Shot Deck to get our reference frames. This one works. Let's get a couple more. Now let's bring that all back into DaVinci. Right, we've got our footage, we've got our references. The first thing we need to do is convert our footage from log to Rec 709. Let's do that. So we're gonna add some nodes. We are going to add a CST here and a CST here. Color space transform. This allows us to change our color space. In this scenario, we're gonna go from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K camera to DaVinci Wide Gamut, which is a massive color space, allowing us to work with loads of colors. We have converted our footage to Rec. 709, which is how we see, basically close to how we see in real life, which is perfect. We are now gonna bring up our reference frame from June. So we're gonna double click this. We have the reference frame as a swipe. So to get it next to it, we're gonna use the split screen feature to bring it up next to us. If that doesn't come up for you, you might be on version. So you just come here and press selected still images and it comes up with both of the images next to each other. So we can see our reference frame throughout. Now, our shot is pretty well exposed. So what we're gonna do first is find a lot that matches our look perfectly. We're looking for one that removes some saturation in the yellows and oranges and brings some fade into the blacks. So I found one earlier, which I think looks really good. BB03. I think that takes us really close already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first start with some primaries and bring our exposure and kind of levels a bit closer to each other. So our scopes are looking quite similar, so that's a good start. We'll bring our saturation down a little bit. It's looking good. We're gonna go into our HSL curves. We're gonna go to Hue versus Sat, Hue versus Saturation, and bring the saturation of everything down a little bit because there's really, really muted tones in these shots. I'd say that looks pretty close. Maybe bring the yellows up a tad towards orange. I'm gonna move this down and we're gonna add a log wheels just to bring a bit of contrast into our shot. Nice. I think we we're really close. We're almost exactly there. The one thing that we're missing is in this shot, there's some grain. So we're gonna add a little node at the end here after our LUT. Boom. I think we have got pretty close to the shot. Now I'm just gonna label the nodes. Perfect. I like to think we've got pretty close to that shot. Okay, so next up, we're gonna bring in some footage that I shot in a place called Madeira, which is this island off Portugal. It has this incredible fog forest that really reminded me of Blade Runner. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a Blade Runner scene, the classic, famous orange grade. Uh, so we're gonna bring up the reference uh, in a second, but first we're gonna convert our footage to Rec. 709. Okay, now that we have our Rec. 709 clip, we're gonna bring in our reference frame. Brilliant. So to start with, we're just gonna change some primaries to try and bring our scopes a little bit closer, bring some contrast in. Now, our first step on this, there's two ways of doing this. The first way is we're gonna get a black and white LUT from our list. So this image here, the Blade Runner shot, is pretty monochromatic. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a black and white LUT on to make it monochromatic. And then in the next node along, we're just gonna bring the color back, okay? I'd say we're pretty close. That's looking pretty, pretty close off the bat. A nice quick grade. All you need to do is to go black and white first and then bring the color back a little bit in the primary wheels. Let's just quickly copy this so to show that you can do it on multiple different shots. I think we're pretty much there. 
There's also a second way of doing this. Now, this way is just a speedy version using one of the LUTs in the Artlist pack called, you guessed it, Orange. The LUT pretty much takes us almost all the way there, kind of like 70%. It's missing some of the color uh, in it, so we're just gonna add another node at the end here and bring, again, some color back in the primaries wheels. And we're pretty much there. Simple as that. Basically just added an orange LUT I added a bit more orange and we're there. So there's two ways of doing that, black and white, and then also the orange LUT from Artlist. I'd say one of the best parts about LUTs in general, uh, there, there are multiple reasons why, but I think one, it really speeds up workflow, as you can see from that grade there, um, which I think really helps when it comes to things like content for social media. Nowadays, things are going out so quickly. It just helps being able to tell the story in a high quality professional way through color but with some LUTs rather than spending tons and tons of time with the color grade. Not only that, but LUTs also help you visualize emotion. So let's say we're trying to get some otherworldly look like this one, these kind of crazy otherworldly unnatural oranges or reds or even blues can create that unnatural look. Again, blues can give us that kind of a sad or dark energy and then super color, nice saturation can give us some really exciting, happy feelings. Talking about blues, sad and scary, we're moving on to the next shot. Okay, so last but not least, I thought I might take you into this magical forest up here and introduce you to a special someone. Harry Potter. So we're recreating this shot from Harry Potter, which includes he who must not be named. And therefore, the shot is super moody, really dark, bluey green. We've got the woods, but unfortunately we don't have any of the mood. So we're gonna have to try and recreate that in post. Okay, so we found the location that we're gonna shoot at. It's really cool, I think it matches the movie kind of. It has the trees in the background, the moss, but unfortunately we don't have some of the most important things that the movie had, which is the amazing camera, the great lenses, the incredible lighting, and we also unfortunately don't have Daniel Radcliffe. But I think if we head back to the office, we can do something with this and try and create a scene that looks and matches quite similar to the reference. Let's do this. Okay, so we're back in the office. We've got the shot imported into DaVinci. Our first step is to get it into Rec 709. So let's do that. Now we're gonna bring in the reference frame. So as you can see, the shots are really, really different. We didn't really have the perfect conditions to work with today, because unfortunately we didn't have things like soft boxes, we didn't have perfect lighting, and obviously our shot isn't as dark. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and bring that in and emulate that using a LUT the LUT tab in Artlist lets you select filters for things like saturation, temperature, and contrast, which definitely came handy in this scenario. So one of the LUTs that I found earlier that I thought really matches this scene is this LUT Horror, which brings in some really blue, moody vibes to the shot. It doesn't perfectly match right now, but I think what this is gonna do to the underlying colors is gonna really help us get to the end result. So let's jump into the primaries and, and bring the overall contrast and light back to the similar reference that we're looking at here. Okay, so I think we're now looking at relatively similar lighting, relatively similar emulation of what the time of day was. Now, I think one of the things we wanna do is bring a bit of temperature and tint back. So we wanna bring the temperature up, make it a little bit warmer, and then bring the tint further towards the greens. So as you can see with this one simple node, we've made just a couple changes and brought the overall look quite similar to the original reference. So I think we're pretty close, but the one thing that's standing out to me is the fact that I am standing out in the frame a little bit too much. I think Harry blends in to the darkness of the frame a little bit more. So we're gonna select me and uh, bring me down a bit, but also play with my skin tones because I think I'm also looking a bit green. Now, there's a few ways to do this, but we're gonna use it for, for speed and efficiency. We're gonna use the Magic Mask, which is something I really, really enjoy using. It's so powerful, such a powerful tool. What we're gonna do is color me in here and then if we press this which shows our masking it has selected us which is super handy and now we're just going to quickly soften the edges a little bit now we're going to go back to our primaries and just bring the levels down of us a little bit to blend us into the background a little we're also going to bring our temperature up a tad and our tint up so that our skin tones are looking a little bit more natural so we're gonna do something that looks quite similar to what we did before, but in this scenario, we're gonna invert the mask. So 
it only affects the background of our image. So our plan here is to try and counteract these oranges. So we're gonna go into our HSL curves again and bring those oranges and reds down a little bit. Okay, so our last few steps in this, we're looking pretty close. We're just gonna use some power windows, play around with some contrast and some overall color adjustments just to finish things off and make things match a little bit closer. Awesome. That is the grade. It's not perfect, but I think we did a pretty good job. So let's have a little look at the Rec. 7 and 9 to grade. So that's all three of the emulations. We did Dune, we did Blade Runner 2049, and we did Harry Potter. I'm gonna show you the results now. Anyway, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, then feel free to check out this video just here. And don't forget to check out the new Artlist LUTs. They're really incredible, as you saw in this video. Obviously, if you enjoyed, make sure to check them out. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.